If you have embedded Spotify player on your website and you want to track how visitors are engaging with it, you have come to the right place. In this video, I will show you how to measure it with Google Tag Manager and Google Analytics. Here I have a demo page with two Spotify players embedded, one for songs and one for podcasts. Also on this page, I have installed a Google Tag Manager container, which is pretty basic. And all it contains is just the Google Tag for Google Analytics 4. If you have no idea what this tag is or how to install Google Analytics with Google Tag Manager, then I will post a link to another tutorial below this video. Watch that first where I teach how to install GA4 and then come back to continue watching this video. So to track embedded Spotify videos, you will need a thing called Custom Event Listener. It is a custom code that you add to your Google Tag Manager container and it will be looking specifically for interactions related to these players. Below this video, you will find a link to a blog post that contains the needed code. In the listener section, you will find the code. So just copy the entire code, then go to Google Tag Manager, Tags, and click New. Then in Tag Configuration, click anywhere and select Custom HTML Tag and paste the code. Set this tag to Fire on All Pages. And then we can name this, let's say CHTML, which stands for custom HTML and then Spotify listener and click save. Now let's test if this listener is working. Click preview and then enter the URL of a page where you have a Spotify player embedded. Click connect. Once Google Tag Manager Preview Mode has connected, also known as Tag Assistant, then try to interact with the embedded Spotify player. For example, here I will click play and it will start playing a song. Then I will click pause. Then I can do the same with the podcast. So I will click play here, then click pause. And let's go back to the Tag Assistant. And here you should see a bunch of different Spotify events. If you see them, it means that the listener is working. If not, then most likely maybe your player that you're working with is not actually a Spotify player. So let's click the first event, then expand the data layer push to see what kind of information do we have. Here we have, for example, the type of the media that was played. So track is song and then for podcasts, it will be episode. Then we also have the audio status. For example, we have playback started. Then here we have progress because the song was short and we very quickly reached the 10% of the audio. And then here, when I clicked pause, we have the playback paused. For the podcast episode, we had playback started and playback paused. We did not have the playback progress because that episode is longer and I did not listen to the 10% or more of that particular episode. Also, we have some additional information like audio URL. Unfortunately, Spotify players do not make the name of the song or the author available. Therefore, the data that we will send to Google Analytics will not be that user friendly. But if, for example, you later export the data and you click on this link, you would be able to see, of course, in a new browser tab or in your Spotify player, what kind of song is it or what kind of episode. So looking at this information, I would say that we could send to Google Analytics 4 the following information. Audio status, because we want to know whether this was a playback started or progress. Then we could also send the audio URL, audio content type, and then maybe audio percent. If you want, you can also send these, but in this tutorial, I will be sending just this, then these two, and then this. In order to do that, we will need to create data layer variables for each individual parameter in the data layer push. We can do that by going to Google Tag Manager, Variables, and then in the user defined variables, click New, then Variable Configuration and Data Layer Variable. Here we have to enter the exact name that we have in the data layer push. So I'll start with audio status. That's why we need this. Paste it like that. This is case sensitive, therefore S must be uppercase. Now let's name this variable. I usually name it like that, DLV, and then the name of the key that I want to access. And now I will repeat the same process for the remaining parameters and I will do that a bit more quickly. So copy this, then 
create a new variable, which is a data layer variable, I paste it here, then give it a name and click Save. Then let's go and copy this, then create a new variable, paste the variable name here and give it a name right here and click Save. And then finally, I will do the same for audio percent. So copy, then create a new variable, data layer variable, paste it here, and then name it here and click Save. Now let's test if these variables are working. So I can click preview to refresh the preview mode. And once that is done, then I will go to the demo website and then click play here, then pause, maybe also play for the podcast episode. And then let's go to the preview mode, click any Spotify event, go to variables. And here we should see that all of the variables contain some values. If you see undefined somewhere, it means that you have a typo in that particular variable's name. So double check that. Now, what we need to do is that when a Spotify event happens, we are going to send an event to Google Analytics for it. So to do that, we need to tell Google Tag Manager to treat this as a trigger. In other words, if Spotify event happens, we want to use this as a triggering condition. To do that, go to Google Tag Manager, Triggers, then New, Trigger Configuration, then Custom Event, and here you have to enter the exact name, which is right here with the uppercase E. So I can copy it from here without quotes and paste it like that. And then let's name the trigger and click Save. The final step is to create a Google Analytics for event tag, which will send the Spotify interaction data to Google Analytics. To do that, let's first go to tags. I already have the Google tag. So from that tag, I will need to use the tag ID. I will copy it, then close this and create a new tag, which is Google Analytics GA4 event, then paste the measurement ID. And then here we can enter the name of the event. Here we can send any name that we want. But for me personally, it makes sense that the event starts with the word audio, because then I know that this event is related to some embedded audio player on my website. And then after that, I would also like to send what kind of event is it? Is it playback started? Is it progress? Is it playback paused? Although, you know what? I don't want to send playback paused because I would like to track just three events, which is playback started, playback progress, and playback complete. That's why maybe first I will need to make my trigger more precise because right now it will fire even on playback paused, but I don't want that. So in Google Tag Manager, I will discard these changes and then I will go to triggers, click on my custom event trigger and tell this trigger to fire not on all Spotify events, but only on some events where the DLV audio status matches regex or you can select regex ignore case. And then I will list three events, which is playback started, playback progress or playback complete. So playback started, then I enter a pipe, which in regular expressions means or it is a vertical dash, then I will enter playback progress, although one second, let me check. No, it should be just progress. So just progress, or I don't have the playback complete, but I definitely know that this listener dispatches the playback complete. So we will be looking for playback started, progress or playback complete, then click save. Now let's go back to tags. And again, I will need to copy the measurement ID. Ideally, it would make more sense to create a variable that stores the measurement ID and then reuse that variable throughout all your Google Analytics tags. If you want to learn more about this technique, then I will post a link to a tutorial below the video. Now let's close this tag, create a new tag where configuration is Google Analytics GA4 event, paste the measurement ID, then audio, and then underscore and then we will insert the variable, which is audio status. So this part will always be static while this will be dynamically replaced by Google Tech Manager. So if event is progress, then the name of the event here will be audio underscore 
and then progress. If audio just started, for example, we have this event, then the name will be audio underscore playback started. And then together with this event, we can also send some additional information about the episode or the song. What kind of song is it? What is the percentage listened? So to do that, we can expand the event parameters section, add parameter. In fact, we will add three. And then the first one will be audio percent. I am coming up with these parameter names because there are no recommended audio parameters in GE4. Then here I will enter audio URL. And here I will enter audio type. And here we will insert the variables that will dynamically pick the data from the data layer, for example, here. So in the first field, I'm looking for audio percent, let's click this button, and then insert audio percent, then here in URL, I will insert audio URL, and in audio type, I will insert audio content type. Finally, let's add a trigger. So click anywhere, and then select Spotify event. Let's name this tag G for event, Spotify player events or something like that and click save. Let's test everything. So click preview to refresh the preview mode, then click continue, go to the website. And here let's play some song. I will wait for a while to get more progress events. Now let's click pause, then I have podcast, I will click play here, then pause, and let's go to the preview mode. So here I have a bunch of Spotify events, this listener fires an event every 10% of the song or the episode. So I click the first one, and I have that tag fired right here. Right now when I'm recording this video, there is a bug in Google Tag Manager. So sometimes tags are displayed as unknown tag type. But don't worry, your tag is still working fine. This is just a bug in how Google Tag Manager preview mode displays the tag type. So here we have the playback started. So my tag fired, then we have a bunch of progress events, we have 10% progress, 20% progress, and so on. Then at some point, I think I clicked pause. So here it is, but my tag did not fire because I made my trigger more specific to not fire on the playback post. And also I have some tags fired on the podcast episode. But again, pause is excluded. Now let's check if these events are received by Google Analytics. So in Google Analytics, go to admin, then scroll down and look for debug view. And here you should see a bunch of different audio events like audio progress, audio playback started, you can click on any of these events and then see that they contain some values. Now, if you want to use these audio parameters in reports, you need to register them as custom dimensions. In our case, we need to register three parameters, audio percent, audio type and audio URL. To do that, let's go to data display, custom definitions, then custom dimensions and click create custom dimension. First, I will start with the audio percent. So I will just type audio percent like that scope must be event. And then here we have to enter the name of the parameter. So if you don't remember the name of the parameter, you can always go to Google Tag Manager, open your event tag. And this is the name of the parameter. So click audio percent then go back to Google Analytics and enter it like that. If you don't see the suggestion here, don't worry, it means that the data has not been processed yet, but this will work, click Save, and do the same thing for the other two custom dimensions. So let's add the second one, which is audio URL, then here the parameter name will be audio URL, click Save. And then the final one, which is audio type, and here audio underscore type and click Save. So we made sure that everything is working, we are getting some events. Now in Google Tag Manager, you will need to click submit and then publish in order to publish these changes and they will go live to your website visitors. After that, wait for 24, maybe even 48 hours and you will start seeing the Spotify event data in your Google Analytics property. If you're wondering what to do later with that data and how to see that in the actual reports, I have a blog post for that where you can learn more. So I will post a link to it below the video. 
and there is a section about finding Spotify player data in Google Analytics. And that's how you can track embedded Spotify player with Google Tag Manager and Google Analytics. If you found this video useful, hit the like button. That will help me understand what videos do you like and what should I create in the future. Also, if you want to learn more about Google Tag Manager or Google Analytics, then subscribe to this channel. My name is Julius, this is Analytics Mania, and I'll see you in the next video.